everyone. We're going to be looking at this thing, but how did I get there? What did I do to arrive at whatever that was? Um, one thing leading on from the last lesson, um, little tricky ways to find so much more in this area or how to understand the, the instrument a bit more. Um, one thing is octaves, how to play the same note, an octave above or an octave below. So if you don't know what an octave is, uh, if I say a, uh, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. This C is one octave above this C, or this C is one octave below this C, and then you have more octaves up and more octaves down. So, on the guitar, if I'm playing, for instance, uh, this note, the shape for an octave, two frets up, two strings down. It's like that. It's the same for on the, the sixth and the fourth string, same shape. I'm in drop D at the moment, so it won't sound the same, but that's the shape. Same note, and then same shape works down here. We do have to stretch the, the shape apart now. When we move down to the fourth string with the second string, we have to spread it apart, and same thing again with the next two strings. So that's the shape in this position, or for these strings, then you've got the inverted version. So for instance, if I want to play this note down an octave, that's the shape. Two frets up, three strings down. This is the same shape when I use the second and the fifth string. And like the other shape, when I move down again, I have to spread it apart. So now, third string and sixth string, I need two frets in between. Okay, in between the two fingers. So that was a quick explanation of how to play your shapes, or how to find the same note an octave above or an octave below. Why is that important? Let's go through it. So with this, this idea, I had an idea for writing a simple uh, harmonic structure, like a, a chord progression. So it was D major, A major, B minor, A major again, and then I heard, my, in my head, I heard a, a sort of a resolution to the G major. Now, um, two things. I'm in drop D, so I wanted to play a song where I was like... So I tuned this string down to the note D, which is the same as the fourth string. If you don't know what that note is, it's easy to learn, but if you don't know what it is, you just have to tune fourth string, oh sorry, tune the sixth string so it sounds like the fourth, and that is one octave lower. So, so all the chords are fine when I'm playing that one, then I'm playing the A, it's fine, the B minor is fine, but then when I play the G, I can't use this note because the actual G note is there now. It's two notes higher because I tuned this string down. Anyway, so now what do I do? I can play, I can move this note up too, but then I'm stuck. Maybe I can do, I can change my fingers around. So now, I'm playing a normal G chord like this because of, oh sorry, that's two fingers, a bit, a bit weird to see, but I'm holding the two notes here with my first finger, and then I'm using that for the root note. So I'm avoiding this, the fifth string because I'm trying to play, that, not for me, not my style. So I'll play like this. So what's the next thing? We, we wanted to find out the, the open chords available, open strings available. All right, so we've got the sixth, the fifth, and the fourth string available. Uh, when I play, what was the next chord? It was A. Uh, so I've got the fifth and the first. So now the first has been added in. So we've got six, five, four, and one. On the B minor, there's nothing. And then uh, we had a G in there. So the G lets us use the second and third string. So once again, in this idea, all the open strings are fair game to use in any of our chord shapes, which is always a good thing. So I want to explore the sounds. If you come up with a cool melody, like, I, I think this sounds nice, it's very simple. Maybe I want to try another, uh, another way of using the notes, or the same technique, or the same idea. So, if I use a hammer-on, like 
like that. I can find the same notes on the string above. There it is. The fifth and the seventh fret is the same as zero and two on the next string. So now, instead of playing the whole thing here, I can try and do something with those two notes or those that position for those two notes. You see, so it's not the technique, yes, it's changed, but the idea behind it is rather simple. Now, that's if I wanted to do the same, same movement. If uh, I want to use the same idea, like a hammer on, a note, you know, playing a note like that, maybe I can search, okay, so what if I want to use this note, this note, same as the open string, which we were allowed to use. That's cool. Maybe now I want to bar this finger so I can kill, uh, kill, <laughs> so I can still play that higher note in the D shape. But now I'm doing a hammer on. And a pull off maybe, I don't know. Or do I pull off here? starting to sound cool and I've only just started playing the first chord. When I hear the next chord, in my mind, instead of playing bass, a bass line I hear a bass line that moves na, 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 like that. Now I know because of the theory that when you're playing, let's say you're playing a, a chord like my the A chord, there's only three notes. It's the first note, the third note, and the fifth note within the scale. Um, I know that you can move the first note. In this case, we've got, was it, uh, what chord am I on? I'm on A. All right, so you've got the three notes, the one, three, and five. You can take the one and you put it up an octave. Uh, and so you end up with, instead of one, three, five, you end up, oh my God, I'm feeling weird. Okay, three, five, one. So you've sort of inverted, it's called an inversion. I'm trying not to go too far into that kind of stuff, but that's the idea. So I know you can use the same notes. You don't have to have A in the bottom of an A chord. The same way if you strum all, all uh, six strings when you're playing an A chord, you know, you can use this low chord if it's a uh, low string, if it's tuned to E, that's fine. So it's an A chord slash E, if that helps. Anyway, so in my mind, when I play a D and I stop on this note, that sounds cool. And then I I like the movement between nah, nah, these three notes. And then I can hear in my head the bass line that I had, the idea I had for the bass line. Nah, nah, nah. It's those three notes. So using that octave idea, there's the bass line for a uh, bass note for the first one, and then bass note for the second one. Bass note for the third one. Okay, I'm starting to understand what I want to do. So what what am I looking for now? I can play first chord, normal, but then I need this note with an A chord. I can't use the first string anymore with that fingering. I could try if I want that high string in there. I don't care, I don't need it. And then the next bass note. Perfect for the B minor. Hopefully this is starting to make sense. I'm, I'm hearing, it's a combination. If you don't hear the line in your head, then it's hard to figure it out, but I heard the line. Anyway, so I'm, I'm thinking of movement between. All right, what other ideas can I come up with? Sometimes it works really well if you have a nice sound for the first chord. Uh, you can keep the three notes and just change the bass note. So for instance, now my bass line is going down to there. So I can use the first note on the fourth string open. I can use the pinky if that's possible. And 
I'm just playing now, oh, the arpeggio is just on the first three strings. So I'm doing the D, normal, stretching my pinky. This may not be very comfortable for you. It's not very comfortable for me. Um, so I would then start changing this to a barred version. That's way more comfortable. And then when I'm playing the B minor, cool. That works. And if you look at B minor, the top three notes of a, B, a normal B minor chord like that anyway is, it's a D chord. So, instead of having to play the whole B minor, maybe I'll play D for the first chord, D with this note for the second chord, arpeggio is playing the first three, three strings, then I can play either bar this, I don't need this finger if I'm not using that string. And then an A with the D chord in the top as well. And then maybe A normal. A, because why not? Hopefully this is making sense. Whew, it's getting complicated. So now, keep the first chord, move the bass note. Maybe now I want to think of um, changing the first chord because now I've got the open string possibilities. I like the sound of that. So maybe now I'm going to try playing that with the moving bass line. Sounding good. I'm liking it. Um, a lot of the time I have found that uh, in like, for, for example, with this, um, chord progression, it can sound nice when you use the same thing for the first three chords and maybe change it for the, the fourth one. So for instance, so I've changed this because if I keep that note, it's got a suspended unresolved sound. A lot of the time I've found for this kind of movement, I like, doesn't mean it's right, but it's what I, I tend to do a lot of if I'm keeping the same sound for the first three. Maybe I'll resolve or do something like that for the last chord in the sequence, whether it's two, uh, three chords, four chords, whatever. Just an idea. So what else? Uh, 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 Okay, I'm a bit sidetracked. Someone, someone came and interrupted my groove, and I'm I'm lost. Um, <laughs> all right, cool. All right, so if we're exploring, we can move further up the neck. For instance, if um, the idea is like this one. All right, so no, 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 no. You don't need to know the the names of the notes, but you know that. That note from tuning, it's up here on the fifth fret. So if I play, if I pretend I'm going to use my fingers like this now, there's a fret between the first two notes and no nothing between the next ones. So if I play now, oh, look at this, it's the same notes. So how do I do that in this next position? All right, well. You can use the octaves. You can find you can find this guy up there uh, in that position if you want. Oh. <laughs> I keep forgetting I'm in drop. I'm drop in drop D. Um, so yeah, if I'm playing, um, where's this note? If I'm using the second string to play those, if I look at this position, I need to find that note on the third string, which is there starting to sound a bit interesting. So then what's the next note? I can find that note on the next string. So now I've got this shape. Cool thing is now, because it's a D chord, I can use these out of tune strings. <laughs>
addition to... The thing that I like about doing this is it opens up other, other possibilities, but also the tone for me, the higher up the neck and the lower this... Uh, hang on, <laughs> say that right. The, the tone of the notes. It's a bit thicker on this string and if I took it up again the tone is thicker again so maybe oh here we go three positions same notes bit thicker there but okay what about now I've got these oh now I'm in a completely different position and I've no idea where I'm going what do I do oh my god same thing for the next chord See what I'm doing? You get to explore the neck just through a concept rather than looking at a page with all the notes or all the scale diagrams. You just spend more time uh, exploring with these ideas. So find the same notes. And so maybe use your ears from then if you've got good enough ears. I do that a lot. Anyway, there's so many ideas, so many possibilities. So, for instance, when I was mucking around with this this idea, this song, this morning, I ended up playing something, uh, and it's like an idea I've already written before. Oh, actually, I'll play you that one, and then I'll play you the one I came up with this morning. So, the, f the idea I wrote, and this was months and months and months and months ago, probably a year ago or more. I have no idea. Anyway. like that. There was another idea which was... And so the one I came up with today... Uh, there was a few. I've got to remember them now. just abused and <laughs> people do the same thing all the time so why not try something different um, all right so I think that was it the main the main idea for the, the video was was kind of like here's how to play octaves and here's how to use it for songwriting and understand the instrument like I said in the last one the more you understand or the more you can Think about the instrument in a different way, in a more musical way, you'll get a lot more out of it. So exploring open strings, now with octaves you can find the same notes, or just with the fact that you know you can play the same thing. Oh! You can play the same thing in multiple different areas, you've got, yeah, yeah. And drop D was cool, I just wanted to play something in drop D, that's why I'm in drop D, and why not? Mix it up a little bit. That's the only time I, I, I use alternate tuning, I think. Drop D, otherwise I'm completely lost. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully that's cool and that's helped you out with um, understanding a bit more about the instrument. Cool? Have a good one. See ya.